Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video. Uh, today we're going to tackle the question that a lot of the player base is asking, and that is, should you go after Galactic Legends? And I've watched a bunch of other content creators kind of uh, start tackling this question and really starting to get frustrated with it and I completely understand the frustration but I'm going to kind of go after this from a positive vibe uh, but I want to focus on looking at this answer from uh, the perspective of somebody like me who is six months into the game um, so those beginner players um, all the way to kind of like mid-game players right now uh, on is this something that's worth tackling right now is it something invest that's going to be worth your investment in the long run or is it going to really hamper you down uh, to the point of where uh, maybe the game even becomes just frustrating for you instead of fun. So let's look at it, at it from that perspective and I want to hop in and just kind of look at my uh, current main account right now so uh, we can get an idea of kind of where I'm at after six months of gameplay and where I think I would be had Galactic Legends been out and I had just had that amount of time to just focus on uh, Galactic Legends. So uh, right now, I only have two Relic characters. I've got a Jedi Knight Revan and Jolie Bindo. Um, as most of you know, I don't, if you've got Jedi Knight Revan, you know that that is a time seek to get that in. A lot of his uh, characters are uh, that you need for his event are seven star farms but they're hard node farms so they do take some time to get to uh, it definitely took me quite a bit of time of uh, farming every day for jolly bindo bastila um you know these characters that are hard node farms that are just take some time to work through to get and um but i'm, I'm really happy that i got jedi knight revan he's a very very fun character to play so um right now two relics um i do have uh, probably a few main teams that I focus on uh, for Grand Arena. So um, I've got my main Jedi team, and then I've got an Emperor Palpatine-led team. Um, I'm working on uh, Night Sisters right now, and my main focus right now is Geonosians because I really want their ships uh, to kind of help me in my ship arena. But um, I, that's six months worth of gameplay. Now, as far as investment goes, I've got about $200 invested in the game. I did buy the Hyperdrive bundle which is one of the reasons that I have Night Sisters. I wouldn't even have had any time to farm them uh, had uh, had I not have gotten the Hyperdrive bundle. But I bought it when I was about 82, 83, um, getting towards max level. It came out. Um, I spent $100 for like a Christmas present for myself and said, hey, I love this game. Let's go ahead and invest in that um, and just kind of have some fun with it. So I went that route. I've probably got about $200 invested total. So for $200 of um, you know invested in the game, and then me playing time wise, like I don't miss any refreshes. I don't miss any raids. Like I've spent a lot of time in this game. So six months of game time, $200 investment. I've got two relic characters. Now let's hop in and look at the requirements for uh, Galactic Legends. And we'll just look at one of the characters because both of them are gonna have similar requirements as far as um, what's needed relic wise but you know for new players for somebody who hasn't relic a character yet just so you know that's a that's a, a time consuming process it probably takes me a month's worth of time to get the gear to relic a character um, and that's with even investing some crystals into it along the way to kind of speed up the process so um, but let's look at the prerequisites here for Kylo Ren uh, you're looking at a Relic 7 Kylo Ren Unmasked. I don't have any characters at Relic 7 yet, so that's an even deeper investment than what I have put into my uh, main team so far. So you're looking at Relic 5 Stormtrooper. I've got one character for Relic 5. First Order Officer, Relic 5. Uh, Kylo Ren, Relic 7. Uh, Captain Phasma. And, and here's my frustration with this. It makes you Relic characters that you're probably not going to use or not going to want. And at the lower levels too, this is really going to affect your rankings in Grand Arena. It's going to push your Galactic uh, power up to where you're going up against people who have maybe full-on Relic Grievous teams, Relic Darth Revens, Relic uh, JKR teams. Like, uh, So you go against people who have just better, more uh, synchronized uh, teams than what you do, uh, 
with you know having to use a Captain Phasma, you know some of these characters are just not all that great. Now some of them are good, like Sith Trooper would, is a blast to play. I really wish I had time to invest into that character and then even add him like into my Sith team right now. I think it would be a lot of fun. Um, from what I've seen, the changes made to uh, Smuggler or Veteran Smuggler Han Solo, um, there may be a good place for them on a, on a Resistance team now. But if you're going after Kylo Ren, you're really not going to focus on your resistance team. So you, you're, you're relicking up a character that you're not even really going to be able to use. So that's kind of the frustrating part on, on some of this is that you're just investing um, you know, high relics in the characters that maybe aren't even really good for your team and, um, and for your galactic power. Like I, I know that you know, GP kind of seems like a, a fun thing to get early on in the game, but when you start... Uh, looking at Grand Arena, I try to keep mine slimmed down so when I'm placed against people, I have the advantage because I want to win those matches to, um, for somebody who's early on in the game, that's a great source of extra Zeta materials, and it's just fun to win, too, <laughs> in the long run. I enjoy winning just because it's fun. So, uh, you know, these are some really, really big investments. So I'm looking at, if you're going from a free-to-play standpoint, especially if you're not willing to spend any money on the game at all, it may take three years for a new player to unlock one of these characters. And then, you know, a three-year investment in your time when you're maybe not even having fun, I wouldn't recommend going for uh, the Galactic Legend route right now. I, I think CG has a great game. And don't let me be pessimistic because I do love this game. I log into it. I play it every day. But the power creep in this game for a new player coming in is overwhelming at times. Like, it is something that when I look at, if I don't spend, then all these people are getting ahead of me. Well, you know, I'm at the point now where I've kind of accepted that people are going to be ahead of me because I'm not going to spend a ton of money on a game, even if I love the game. Um, you know, it's just, uh, you're looking at $200. I could have bought several, you know, console games for that amount of money. Uh, and had, you know, the full stories of those games to play through. So, you know, while this game is a blast and I love it and it really kind of hits a lot of my geek, nerdy, you know, <laughs> bones of, of collecting characters and, you know, Star Wars, I love Star Wars, but, um, you know, if I was going after this and wanted to be a top-end character, I would, you know, I'd have to sell my house and <laughs> spend all my money on, on this game to kind of keep up with it. So, um, in... You know, short short story or long story short, you know, I would recommend doing some farms maybe that is more beneficial to you in the long run, uh, like a Jedi Knight Revan. Um, you know, you can go and hop after Darth Revan from there, or Padme. Like right now, I'm going from Jedi Knight Revan um, because I have some good Jedi that I can throw in there uh, to farming Geonosians. That's going to turn into Padme, where I can put uh, my uh, Soka and Anakin. Uh, in the uh, Padme lineup. So uh, there's just some better options out there that are just a lot cheaper route to go, I think, uh, and probably will bring you more joy and more fun in the game when you're not feeling that you're always at a disadvantage because players um, just have better squads than you if you go that route. Now, in the long run, you know, after that three-year grind, you may be, yes, I can completely destroy everything. Uh, but it's just according on if you want to put that amount of time into it. So let me know what you think. Um, you know, comment below. Um, I'm going to leave the link to some videos I've got. I've got some guides on uh, some teams that you can start at or start off with, and then uh, you know, focus towards other legendary characters as well. I do have the team that you would need to start um, from a free to play standpoint if you do want to go after Classic Legends um, as well on there. So uh, you know. Feel free to hop into that content if you want some guides on that information. But uh, let me know what you think. Are you going after Galactic Legends? Uh, is it a priority for you? Um, I'm really interested to see what new players, uh, beginner players, are, are thinking about Galactic Legends um, now that they've had some time in the game. So uh, let me know what you think. And remember to like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Uh, brand new channel still. I, I did get up to 12 subscribers, so I'm starting to get into the tens of subscribers. So hopefully uh, in a few months we'll be at over 100 or so. So, uh, But thank you guys for watching. I uh, love doing this content. Uh, let me know how I'm doing. And as always, have a blast on the hollow tables and have a great day.